Here we're going to look at an extension of what I like to call my favorite equation from elementary mathematics. And that is, we're going to show for all natural numbers m and n, where m is odd, that 1 to the m plus 2 to the m plus 3 to the m all the way up to n to the m is a multiple of 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n. So I think this is pretty surprising. This is built off of, like I said, what I call my favorite equation from elementary mathematics, which says that 1 cubed plus 2 cubed all the way up to n cubed. Well, on the one hand, that's equal to n times n plus 1 over 2 quantity squared. But on the other hand, the interior of all of this stuff being squared is a well-known formula for a triangular number. That is, this inside is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n. So that means that this left-hand side is most definitely a multiple of 1 plus 2 all the way up to n. So in the case where m is equal to 3, this goal is satisfied. So we're going to prove this for an arbitrary odd m, and we're going to use the notion of congruence modulo n. So let's recall that definition. We say that a is congruent to b mod n if b minus a is a multiple of n. Sometimes we would also say that n divides b minus a, or a and b have the same remainder after dividing by n. So I've got a bunch of videos in my number theory playlist where we go over the basics of this, and so we're just going to really quickly review it. So here are some facts built off of this definition. If a is a multiple of n, then a is congruent to 0 mod n. So that's pretty clear because a minus 0, well, that's going to be a multiple of n given that a is a multiple of n. Next, here are some examples. So 13 is congruent to 3 mod 5 because 13 minus 3 is 10, that's a multiple of 5, but it's also congruent to negative 2 mod 5. So sometimes we'll want to work with negative residues. These are called residues sometimes. And that's because 13 minus negative 2 is 15, but that's a multiple of 5. Notice also 3 minus negative 2 is 5, and that's clearly a multiple of 5. Now here's another example, 27 is congruent to 6 mod 7, that's because 27 minus 6 is 21, a multiple of 7, but it's also congruent to negative 1 mod 7, kind of in line with this example over here. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of all of this stuff that we needed to recall and so we can jump into the solution. Okay, so now that we've looked at some definitions which will be important as we prove this claim, let's go ahead and jump into the proof. So we're going to break this into two cases. So the first case is when n is odd. So notice we're assuming that m is always odd, but n can be any natural number. That means it could be even or odd. So this would be the first case when n is odd. Well, if n is odd, then we can write it as one more than an even number. So let's do that. So let's write n as 2 times a plus 1, where a is some sort of non-negative integer. Okay, great. So that means n could be 1, 3, 5, 7, so on and so forth. Now, just to get an idea of what we're working with, We'll plug this n equals 2a plus 1 into the standard formula for the triangular number like we had on the previous board. So with n equal 2a plus 1, we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n is 1 plus 2 plus 3 ending at 2a plus 1. But like we saw before, that's n times n plus 1 over 2. But in this case, that will be 2a plus 1 times 2a plus 1 plus 1, or 2a plus 2 over 2. Now we can do some simplification, and that's going to become a plus 1 times 2a plus 1. So what we want to do is show that this kind of object, where n is 2a plus 1, is a multiple of this 1 plus 2 all the way up to n, which in this case is the product of a plus 1 and 2a plus 1. So for that to be the case, 
it must be a multiple of both a plus one and two a plus one. So we're gonna prove both of those little subcases individually. So let's maybe write it as a claim. So this first claim is that one to the m plus two to the m all the way up to two a plus one to the m is a multiple of two a plus one. Then after proving this, we'll also show that it's a multiple of a plus one. And those two things together will show that it's a multiple of the product and, this, and thus a multiple of this triangular number. Okay, so we'll do this just by reducing modulo to a plus one, like we talked about on the first board. So now I'll rewrite this, but I'll split something out of the middle of it. So happening right in the middle, we have a to the m, and then a plus one to the m. And we'll see something important happens right there, but let's rewrite this real quick. So we've got one to the m plus two to the m, all the way up to a minus one to the m plus a to the m plus a plus one to the m plus a plus two to the m, all the way up to two a plus one to the m. Like I said, we're gonna reduce this modulo two a plus one. So we're gonna do that using negative residues as needed. So let's do the easy thing first. So two a plus one is a multiple of two a plus one. So that is congruent to zero mod two a plus one. Okay, but then a plus one, notice that a plus one and two a plus one differ by a. So that makes a plus one congruent to negative a mod to a plus one. So let's maybe write that here. This is negative a to the m. Okay, and then notice that this guy right here will be equal to negative a minus one to the m and then so on and so forth. So we've got this nice folding action on the sum. And again, that's because a plus one minus negative a is two a plus one, which is zero mod two a plus one. So here we're just working with negative residues. Okay, so that means we can rewrite this as one to the m plus two to the m plus all the way up to a minus one to the m plus a to the m plus negative a to the m plus negative a minus one to the m all the way down to negative one to the m. Like I said, this is all happening mod two a plus one. Next, we know that m is an odd number so this negative a to the m is really negative a to the m power like that. And then we've got similar things happening to all of these other terms. So this guy right here will be negative a minus one to the m and so on and so forth. So that means we have some logical cancellations. So this one to the m will cancel with this negative one to the m this a minus one to the m will cancel with this term right here. And then finally, this a to the m will cancel with this minus a to the m. And in fact, I haven't written it in there, but this two to the m will cancel with a negative two to the m, which is over there. So notice everything cancels, and we get that this is congruent to zero mod two a plus one. In other words, our object is a multiple of 2a plus 1. So we've proven this first claim. Okay, let's get rid of this proof and we'll look at the second claim. So now we're ready to look at our second claim, which is this sum 1 to the m plus 2 to the m all the way up to 2a plus 1 to the m is a multiple of a plus 1. So we're going to start off with the same kind of trick. So I want to split this in the middle and then start reducing modulo a plus one. So I'll split this in the middle with terms like a and a plus one, and so on and so forth. So we've got one to the m plus two to the m, all the way up to a to the m plus a plus one to the m plus a plus two to the m, all the way up to two a plus one to the m, like that. Now we can start reducing modulo a plus one. So modulo a plus one, this guy is gonna be zero because it's a multiple of a plus one. And then this one right here, notice that a plus two minus one is a plus one. So this is congruent to one modulo a plus one. So I can replace this with one to the m. 
then I can replace the next one with two to the M and so on and so forth, all the way up to this guy right here, which I can replace with A to the M. And that's again, because two A plus one minus A is equal to A plus one. So those are congruent modulo A plus one. So putting all of this together, we get two times one to the M plus two to the M all the way up to A to the M. And this is happening modulo A plus one. So notice everything has a pair with it. We have one to the M, one to the M, this two to the M will be combined with one here, and then this A to the M will be combined with this right here. Now we actually need to break this into two subcases based on the parity of A. So let's maybe do that. So we've got subcase number one, which is when A is even, and then subcase two, which is when A is odd. And these will both work out fairly similarly, although maybe the cleanest way is to do by both of these cases. Okay, so notice that if A is even, that means that A is equal to two times B for some natural number B. So let's notice if A is equal to two B, then this object right here simplifies to two times one to the M plus two to the M all the way up to B minus one to the M plus B to the M plus B plus one to the M all the way up to two times B all to the M power. Again, that's just by substituting 2B equals A and then pulling it apart, apart those middle terms right here. So let's recall that we're working modulo A plus one, which in this case is modulo 2B plus one. So that means we can replace these with some negative residues. So notice this guy right here will be negative one to the M all the way down to this guy right here will be negative B to the M. Great. But now we've built cancellation into this whole picture. Notice that this minus B to the M will cancel with this one. And then this minus one will cancel with this one and everything in the middle will cancel with its pair. And so we're left with zero modulo 2b plus 1, but 2b plus 1 is a plus 1. So we've shown in this first subcase that we're good to go. So now let's maybe get rid of this and we'll look what's happening in the second subcase. Now we're ready to look at subcase 2, which is when a is odd. In that case, we can write a as 2 times b plus 1, but that makes a plus 1, 2b plus 2, or 2 times the quantity b plus 1. Now we're going to do a similar trick to what we did before. So we'll take this object right here and we'll rewrite it with the substitution. So that's going to give us 2 times 1 to the m plus 2 to the m all the way up to b to the m plus b plus 1 to the m plus b plus 2 to the m all the way up to 2b plus 1 to the m. And then next, we're gonna work modulo a plus one, which is two b plus two in this case. And so replacing some of these numbers with their negative equivalents means we can replace this two b plus one with negative one to the m power, all the way down to this guy right here, which is b plus two, which can be replaced with negative b to the m. So that gives us a lot of stuff to cancel. This b to the m will cancel this minus b to the m, and all of these in the middle will be canceled with these guys. Notice everything doesn't cancel though. We're left with this two times b plus one to the m. So let's see what we get out of that. That's gonna be two times b plus one to the m. But notice that two times b plus one to the m if m is odd, is most definitely congruent to zero mod 2b plus two, or mod a plus one in our first notation. So either way we look at it, we have this second claim proved. So let's put a little check mark next to that. Okay, so let's get rid of this and then we'll summarize this first case. So we just got done proving the following two cases. So in the case that n was odd, we showed that one to the m plus all the way up to n to the m was both a multiple of this two a plus one object and this a plus one object. 
But putting these two claims together, that tells us that one to the m plus two to the m all the way up to two a plus one to the m is a multiple of the product of these two. And what we really get is that it's a multiple of the least common multiple of those two. But you can check that those are relatively prime pretty easily. Next, we know that this is a multiple of, like I said, the product of these two, 2a plus 1 times a plus 1. But as we said before, this 2a plus 1 times a plus 1 is exactly the sum that we were looking for. Okay, let's get rid of this and we'll sketch case two. So now we're ready to look at our second case, which is when n is even. So that means our triangular number, one plus two plus three, all the way up to n, will now be one plus two plus three, all the way up to two a, which is equal to two a times two a plus one, all over two, or a times two a plus one. Now we're gonna play the same game we're gonna show that our goal sum is both a multiple of 2a plus one and a. So let's maybe make that a claim. So here's our first claim, and that is one to the m plus two to the m, all the way up to 2a to the m is a multiple of 2a plus one. And then later we'll show that it's also a multiple of a. So let's look at this first case. So we'll do this by reducing modulo 2a plus one, just like we did the last case, and it'll be fairly similar. So we've got one to the m plus two to the m. I'm gonna root out something that's in the middle. So I'm gonna write an a to the m plus a plus one to the m, all the way up to 2a to the m. Now I'm gonna replace the second half with their negative residues, modulo 2a plus one. So 2a is congruent to negative 1, so here we have negative 1 to the m, all the way down to this a plus 1, which is negative a mod m. And then again, because m is an odd number, we've got lots of cancellation here. So this cancels with this, all the way down to those canceling with those. But that's not canceling out to actual 0, that's canceling out to 0 modulo 2a plus 1. So let's write it like this. We've got zero mod 2a plus one. So that's all we need to do to prove this first claim that this sum is a multiple of 2a plus one. And that moves us on to our second claim, which is one to the m plus two to the m, all the way up to 2a to the m is a multiple of a. And so that would finish it off but I'm gonna maybe leave the proof of this as homework because it would be a good exercise built off of what we've already done. And that's a good place to stop.